Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am joined today by the one and only Paul Woodman. Hi, Paul. Good, good day. How are you, Billy? Thank, well, well, thank you. So Paul is one of the leaders of City Life Church. Um, I first met Paul probably 30 years ago. Would, would it be that, that long? When I was five, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul was a sort of raving evangelist on the streets with the one and only Stevie. That's when I first uh, came across you, uh, Paul. So you came to Southampton to study? I came to Southampton University, yeah. I studied there, engineering. I, I had a job at the university for a while. And during that time, I was lured into a straitjacket and other barrels and chests yeah. uh, to do an escapology routine, culminating in me hanging from a crane at 150 feet a few times in a straitjacket. So there, that's a dark memory now, Billy. So that, that obviously was your passion way back then, you know, to sort of see people saved and stuff. But over the years, I've noticed that, you know, your, your engagement in the city, particularly serving those in most need, has been what I would say has been the, the main thing that seems to have characterized you. So what, what was your journey from, you know, on the streets, hanging from cranes, to like getting involved in all of these incredible things that you've done over the last few years, Paul? I suppose I grew up not as a Christian, and so I became a Christian when I was 15 years old through, through school. And then when I became a Christian, I remember thinking, why did no one tell me that this was good news, that God loved me and had a plan for my life? And I was genuinely surprised the church wasn't making more of a, a thing of this. So Steve was really great in terms of being a great communicator of, that, of the gospel. And so I hung out with Steve and others a lot and doing missions in schools and uh, on the streets and all sorts of things. And uh, Steve's ministry has grown over that time. But I think for me, that same passion is still there. How do we get this good news out to thousands and thousands of people? And uh, increasingly, I think it's not just so much about going somewhere and telling them. It's about connecting with their communities and their city in a much uh, deeper way. So if I've got a minute in Luke chapter 10, um, I've often reflected on this. The verbs are there, go, tell, at the start and the end of that, that, that mission construct that Jesus puts together. But in between there, as well as go, tell, it on the mountains, as we used to sing, there's also all these other verbs, enter, stay, eat, drink, bless, heal. And I think what, what we're doing now, uh, what I'm doing now, is much more all of those eight verbs put together. It's going into place as a chaplain, uh, staying there for years, getting to know people. And so when I tell them about Jesus and the good news I've experienced and share that with others, I'm sharing it with people who I know a large number of them by name and I, I've, I've helped them in different ways and I've maybe brought food to their house. And so there's a lot of different ways in which we express that good news. But I think for me, still with that same passion that people know that God looks down from heaven and loves them and cares about their daily lives. Fantastic. So one of the first big projects you got involved with, uh, Paul, was the CLEAR project. Just uh, tell us about how, how you ended up getting involved in, in something like that. Yeah, <clears throat> it was an interesting thing. So it was back in 2001, and we had a visiting prophet come to our church, and they shared uh, that our church would be involved in people from all different nations, and they listed out all these nations. I remember quite smugly thinking, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. We haven't got those countries in our city. You know, there's, there aren't people from uh, those cities here around. You know, there's a lot of other nations, but not those. And I was very smug about it. And anyway, we started to develop the idea of working with uh, refugees. And at that time, it was probably going to be mainly um, from the Eastern European Polish refugees and so on. And, uh, and then interestingly, within a few months, Southampton became a gateway city, a dispersal centre, uh, for refugees coming from all these nations that the guy had listed in our church a few months ago. And we very quickly, so it was May 2001, uh, so it's getting on for 20 years ago next, next year, yeah. opened up this CLEAR project and suddenly all these nations were in our church office and our base and we were teaching them English and advice. And we have raised hundreds of thousands of pounds every year for the last 20 years to serve those people from every nation. So it felt very much as though God led and directed us into that work and has sustained it. I, I remember talking to the council at the time, and they said, yeah, we'll probably need this project for the next five years. And here we are 20 years later and the need is only growing. And so now 
Clear is the main adult learning provider in the city. It, ge it gives people English, steps them up into other things, and then works alongside people once they become uh, from asylum seekers, they get their asylum, helps them get a house, get a job and move on in their life. So that's been a really proud moment for us, I think as a church, to see people who are 20 years on in their journey, who we remember arriving here all those years ago, but now really settled as engineers or professors and teachers and are serving in the city in some way. Amazing. And then, of course, you got involved with the Oasis Academies uh, back in 2007, eight, uh, when those were going. And you're still involved there now. You're operating as a chaplain. Yeah, so they've, they've got a posh title for me, Director of Ethos. means I have to wear a tie quite often, Billy. But I'm around school, and then I work alongside the staff, care, you know, caring for them, supporting them through, through a, quite an anxious time in a minute uh, with the coronavirus pandemic. It's, it's very challenging in school. Uh, but also then uh, articulating that ethos, that Christian ethos, which stems from the life message of Jesus. Uh, and so I speak about Jesus often in school, as part of bringing that ethos alive. And we have a thing called the nine habits, which is really the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit described in Galatians. And I present that to young people and staff as a way of life, you know, to live a life of love, joy, and patience. And uh, so it's a great privilege to do that across, across the academies. So there's now three academies that you're then uh, serving into, isn't it? So Yeah, I'm largely in Lord Seal at the moment, uh, which is a very challenging community but it's great to be part of that community and uh, and there we've got the farm and the preschool as well as the secondary school we're working in uh, so a good 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 projects all around in those those three places and then Mayfield Academy and then Sholing is new on board I spent a bit less time in there yeah. but still spend time with the staff and support people through difficult times and of course you've uh, been involved with the development of hope school um you know part of the board there you're part of the uh, application the bid that we put together a few years ago and so it's great to have your involvement as part of that as well and of course your wife Susanna is uh, one of the of the teachers there so it's um yeah so it's fascinating isn't it how that because we sat down together didn't we in your lounge <laughs> and tapped out an application and yeah here we are hundreds of kids who are already part of the school so it's amazing incredible so i suppose that a more recent development have, has been Love Southampton. Just explain what that is, Paul, and, and how you're seeing that grow and develop. Yeah, I suppose over the last seven, eight years, we've seen budgets to councils reduce, and there's a much greater expectation that others in the community will step up to, step up to serve in their community. So we worked together seven years ago when the youth service was cut and trying to keep some of those places alive, like uh, the Venny in Western and Monty's in Sholing. And so we did some great work during that time. There was that fostering and adoption campaign back in 2013 when we generated a lot of new foster carers for the city. Uh, but now I think in this year, Love Southampton has come to its fore because uh, it's, it is a depleted council that, that's there compared to what was there seven years ago due to the, the series of cuts. And so Love Southampton, working alongside other charities, like the Saints Foundation, Southampton Voluntary Services, we put together a combined community of effort and provided some like £125,000 of meals to people who were either shielding, vulnerable, difficult uh, times. I certainly visited as part of that Love Southampton team families that had nothing in their house were, that were starving. And even in this last week, I've had a family where the mum's been going without food and so that her kids could eat and we've been able to provide a weekly food parcel to them. So I think we sometimes don't see all of the difficulty there is, but we've been successful uh, in this last couple of months to get a grant from the government, but also support from churches like New Communities, St Mary's, our City Life, and we pulled together a little budget to get us through this next 15 months, a little core team, uh, to help us distribute probably something like half a tonne of food a month across the city to families in need. And it, it won't be just to anyone who turns up to our buildings, it'll be to families that we've heard from Hope School, Oasis Academies, Cantel, and all the other schools in the city uh, that we're working really close in partnership with. So it's amazing, isn't it, how we can be good news to many, many people working together as churches. Yeah. Now, obviously, that seems to be the great thing about Love Southampton is the fact that churches are now coming together to serve in partnership rather than competition that maybe has been the case in, in some places at some times. Yeah, I was joking with one church leader last, last week saying when I was at university, 
our two churches just argued about one particular theological point. I won't say which, otherwise you know which churches. I said, and here we are working shoulder to shoulder, serving the city, feeding as many people as we can. And so I think that drive, uh, along with the drive to keep bringing out that message of Jesus to, to people across the city, remains at the heart of all that we, we are doing. Yeah. Well, Paul, any, any sort of uh, encouragement to us as New Community Church as we seek to, you know, we've, we've set ourselves to reshape a bit around developing a culture of, of uh, devotion and dependence on Christ. We've, you know, to see everyone equipped to bring life, to serve those in most need and to look to see cultural change and transformation in our cities. Any, any encouragement to us as we journey this through? No, I, th- I think it's really exciting um, and it's going to be fantastic to see that happen. I think reflect on that Luke chapter 10 chapter and think, well, what places are we going into? How are we blessing them? Who are we eating with? Who are we uh, bringing healing to? And uh, I think you'll be encouraged as you see, you know, so many places that you are already reaching and touching. Uh, but that will only accelerate as you, you focus on this new strands of mission and uh, God bless you in all that you're doing, Billy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul. It's good to it's good to hear you. Uh, ha- have a good have a good rest of your day. I think you're you're seeing um, someone special this afternoon. I, I hear we've got a royal visitor, Billy, to uh, Oasis Farm. So hopefully it'll be in the papers later. She's arriving by helicopter, so right. be fun. Thank you, Billy. Great. Have a good day, Paul. God bless you. Thank you.